Let's go. Let's go. This will be Neo Transistor winner's match. Winner of that will will join the round of 16, guys. Okay, so spawning on the top right location as a what color is that? Teal, let's say teal or blue. I don't know. This is Mr. Ultra. Uh, I think the technical term is cobalt, but oh yeah, blue's blue's okay. No, nobody actually cares. He's the blue guy. Um, down in the bottom right is uh, our Peruvian Terran player Dandy. Hmm. So, TVT on this map, I don't know I ever seen that before, but if I would have to guess, I would guess Raids is the way to go. Yeah, uh, absolutely, especially with how vulnerable these naturals are. And I think I actually saw a Wraith uh, TVT uh, in ASL here. Maybe I'm misremembering, so don't quote me on that one. But uh, the uh, 9 o'clock spawn is, I think, the worst spawn because you have so much more real estate to defend uh, from your, your natural. Um, so I, I think this is maybe the most double quotes fair uh, version of the way this match should look. Basically, double quotes cross spawns. I'm going to keep doing those in the air so you guys can imagine in your brains. <laughs> my parents always told me that watching too many cartoons would kill my imagination so if that's what you guys did and you can't imagine my my air quotes then you know struggle through this with me but hey check out what we got we got double forward racks it's almost like these players play against each other and tomorrow we will add casters in the game to 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 let you all guys guys see the casters uh quote in the air Oh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to see little tiny pictures of us, so I can actually do air quotes that you can see. And then you won't have to use those overstrained, under malnourished imaginations of yours. So using that the game is starting and Mr. Ushek was is asking, Tak Ushek is asking, what is Rappi doing in Korea? So I can uh, say- The answer is living here for four years. Oh yeah. But <laughs> he's like a professional caster, right? Oh, yeah, no. in theory, that's what people tell me. Uh, I'm just going to keep believing it. Uh, people still ask. You know, so Artosis and Tasteless have lived here for maybe 11 years now. People still ask Artosis on stream. It's like, wait, why are you in Korea? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, like everybody's new at some point, right? But like, wow. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I cast some stuff. I decided that it would be really fun to move to the time zone that is worst to cast BSL. <laughs> uh, and, then try, and then try to make it, make it happen. So you predicted four though. years ago that you will be casting some Forwinner Starcraft tournament <laughs> in two yeah. years. Yeah, that's I was good. like, you know that tournament that's only Polish players right now and doesn't have English casting? Maybe in the future it will be. Uh, we will have English casting. And if that happens, I want to make sure I'm in the place that's hardest to cast. It. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing in Korea, guy in the chat. So, congratulations. So, huge appreciation to Mr. Rapid for doing that for us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So, TVT, when you put the players as far away from each other as they can get, probably not going to be that exciting. But what is actually kind of exciting is to see if you folded this this map like uh hot dog not hamburger you uh you would probably get about the identical sim city so it's kind of cool to see both of these players developing their their bases uh identically with the exception of the command center of course uh that dandy just threw down so at least there's a little bit of a uh, a deviation here yeah it's different approach and it's already in, like because it's i don't want to say boring but it's really easy to predict what happened if you will see that both players are going for the similar strategy right because they are having having quite amount the same amount of units so it's basically defender advantage is enough to defend against anything but now if you if we are having different strategies from both players some tactics may surprise other tactics 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true. I don't know if this is quite as rock, paper, scissors as PvP on Gladiator, but uh, it is going to be interesting to see how this plays out because obviously, you know, for uh, for Ultra... Oh, he's actually landing the, the, the barracks to build a Marine. <laughs> that's a little BM, but he is going to get it. <laughs> Oh, the marine, the brown marine shot first, so yeah, four <laughs> HP left. Suck it, barracks. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, in StarCraft 2, you can uh, put your uh, marine on the second, like, like you can choose on which side of the barrack it will pop out, right? Or am I wrong? I don't think so. No, I think it always pops out. At the, oh, unless it's being blocked by a building, I think it always pops out at the same place. Oh, I understand. Hmm. So, the difference in the strategies is that Ultra went for quicker starboard and he's having the tank and two tanks, three marines and two STVs to pu push to Dandy, but Dandy is having... Oh yeah, Dandy is having siege mode, so he should be relatively... He should defend it relatively easily, I think. Yeah, I mean, siege mode will kind of stop this. I mean, credit to Ultra for having a... Uh... Like a really sharp timing here, but I don't know what this is supposed to deny because it doesn't deny the natural. It's just kind of chilling here and maybe making the barracks stay in the air. But the Wraith is kind of a, a, a nice touch. It just needs to hit that one HP Marine. Yeah, exactly. There we oh, go. Now can figure it out. <laughs> like, wait a second. Something's shooting me. Oh, we're trying to move forward for the resiege. Is he going to get it? Ooh, yes. the barracks. The barracks helped. And, and the Wraith, of course. Like the vision, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually a really big play. He's gonna deny the gas here. Ultra, this is this is badass. This is good attack, yeah, really well done. And, and where are oh there will be raid from, from Dandy, so he should be able to defend it, but now the the barracks are giving the vision to, to Ultra, so still really well done. But somehow yeah, Dandy is having seven supply advantage. I don't know how. Okay, yeah, no, let's not get it twisted. Dandy is the truth, but Ultra is in a really strong spot. This Wraith is so nice, and you know, you. I mean, keep in mind, his, his natural is going to be later, so that supply advantage isn't necessarily in supply that kind of matters. Yeah, we'll it's mostly in STVs. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, so if you lose the game, it doesn't matter how many STVs you have. This is a, you know, still getting damage done. It's denying some mining and uh, mineral patches. And now two rays are actually going to kill off this barracks, so we'll have to rebuild that eventually. Oh, Ultra is repositioning, but I don't know if I like it. <gasps> How Wait, did he what? see oh that tank? God. Yeah, what? What happened? <laughs> what? Huh, that was a good trade. Mr. Ultra is a master in tank versus tanks trading. Yeah, oh my god. He's really killing it there. That's that's pretty impressive. Uh, it does force the uh, escape from the uh, certainly doomed bunker, and so maybe one of these tanks goes down before it heads across the map. But uh, anyway, mission accomplished there by Ultra. Put on a little pressure, got some damage done, uh, really limited the tank count, uh, and now he'll just be able to pull back to his now completed command center. Oh, there is a oh, scan. Look, Wraith Wars. Hmm. Nice. This is always funny. And now this 10 STV advantage will get will will kick in for Mr. Dandy, I feel like. Uh yeah, for sure. I mean the, the main art of STV still isn't completed and these rays are killing it. Obviously cloak versus no cloak is uh just could be a pretty big disadvantage there. So <laughs> eventually Dandy's <laughs> gonna get pushed back, but this is such a weird kind of back and forth. And sure Danny's ahead because he had the faster expo. Uh, and he actually might have a faster third expo, uh, or third base here, yeah. Taking it to six. Yeah, but you, you are right that's, that's, like, because of this expansion, then they have advantage, but overall, and after all, like, I, f I think that Ultra is still in, like, he didn't lose that game yet. And his aggression was pretty nice, and it was really close, and, like, I mean, he was really close from closing Dandy from over there. Yeah, but there's this thing that Dandy does. Like, if you watch him play, either he's really cheesy, or he um, he'll just be like, "Oh, I'm not gonna play the game anymore. Sorry." And he just like will not play the game. He'll stay back and just chill. And sure, he's continuing to be annoying with Rays, which is just like, <laughs> oh, now I don't know. Have... This this Wraith battle is like. There's a saying 
This is like definitely one of the ones you should learn. It's like play stupid games, win stupid prizes. It's like <laughs> sick, dude. You're yeah. gonna play this like I can cloak my rays and run around. Now you can cloak your rays and run around. Now now we can both scan each other's rays and who knows? It's just like, okay, congratulations. And yes, this actually does matter a lot, but I feel like if this is the way you win the game, like, hmm. But Ulti is having no scan, so in theory, Dandy should win that. Yeah, yeah, in theory, Dandy is actually gonna come out ahead here. So finally, Ultra will be forced to come back, but really they're just kind of trading Wraith energy and, you know, making both, both. <laughs> Both of them just like play this stupid wraith back and forth. When in reality, Dandy has always been just a little bit ahead economically, and he's about to be ahead a lot economically now that this third base kicks in. Hmm. So what would you do? Like, maybe you know TVT a little bit more than me. So, so like, is it like normal to go for tanks and raids on, on this kind of map? Because like. Because we have tanks and raids against like uh, vultures and tanks, and I'm wondering who will have bigger advantage in, in the straight up fight against each other. Well, I mean, in theory, you know, raids are pretty good at stuff that can't shoot them, but look at this run by from Dandy. He's like, yes. I have the economic advantage, and now you will have an economic disadvantage. Aha! 36 <laughs> to 55 SCVs. Damn. Well, there's your answer about if vultures are good in that composition oh yeah there's a straight up then the answer with me so that's that's what yeah got. he could hear you 30 minutes ago or whenever he played this game hmm. so plus one that's an upgrade is going for danny and there is no armor yet for for ultra so the key uh, upgrade wow. is plus two upgrade so it's still a lot of time until that but if one of the players will get plus two upgrade for the tanks, then on the siege mode, tanks kill another tank with two shots, not three shots. So it's huge advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Ultra has really sacrificed a lot to go for this really heavy wraith count. Ultra is up to eight wraiths right now. There's no way Dandy can stand up to that. Does he have a Goliath? No, he has a turret. So good luck, buddy. Oh, he has two Goliaths. Oh, yeah. Never mind, I'm dumb. But now they're dead. So haha, I was right all along. Oh, and now all the tanks die, so ultra. So now ultra answered to us. Tanks and raids are also very good item composition. <laughs> yeah, but he's not killing any SCVs with this, so he's got to yeah. make this push really count because Danny's had a long time to mine with a an advantage. Let's see how much damage these raids can do. Yeah, but there's only one tank for, for Danny, so actually now he's having only SCVs. And Goliaths to defend against tanks. And this is quite a few raids. Actually, I think he's down to six. Yeah, he's down to six raids, but they are cloaked. And they are continuing to run into turrets. He's actually able to kill the turrets with the tanks on the low ground. So now there's only one that's revealing this uh, Goliath. But the raids are pretty badly damaged, so he can't really afford to fight super straight up. He kills the last Goliath that's out. So, man, Ultra is getting a lot of... I mean... Look, okay, I take back that stupid games and stupid prizes thing. Because this is actually a pretty nice prize here. Scan takes out the opposing rays, and he's still building rays maybe two at a time back at home. Actually, no, he stopped rays production. Never mind. I don't know. If Dandy will hold that, that's that's really amazing for me. Because I felt like Ultia have this game. But now, suddenly, somehow, Dandy is defending this. And, and the suppliers are very close. It looks like Actually, Ultra got raids. Actually, he's continuing to rebuild raids. Yeah, he's rebuilding raids and he's macroing tanks from two factories. So it's like, but basically two factories and one starport over units against five, six factories, right? So, and it's still mm -hmm. even battle. That's really amazing. Uh, yeah, but keep in mind there's that upgrade disadvantage. So Dandy's like his his units are stronger. He's got more bases, more SCVs. He's getting a fourth base. So Ultra is pretty all in on making this race strat work. Hmm. Yeah, but six o'clock base is already running. So yeah, then this, then this is this is what is running well for for Dandy. They are both from Soul Team. So so this is run by Mr. Fujikura, by the way, guys. So if you want to. Thank to Mr. Fujikura. This is this is a really great team. Probably the best team is I think it's the best team from the from the STPL. 
they won the, yeah. the, the previous STPL. So yeah, this is this they is did. very powerful. They, this is a very powerful um, team, and despite losing so many engagement, Dandy is still ahead in this game. So at least in the supplies. So that, that's that's really it shows you how how good of how good of a player he is. Mm. Losing another wraith here. Um, yeah, Ultra is kind of running out of gas at this point. Uh, so eventually the rays will be annoying, ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, but you know the joke kind of gets old after a while. I mean, it was really cool that eight wraith comeback that Ultra was able to use to kind of bulldoze back into the natural was cool and all. But now uh, you know it, it's it's time to see who's actually stronger. And Danny feels so confident that he's sending double dropships across the maps and hoping he doesn't run into those raids. So eventually he might lose these dropships, but actually with a nice scan, he picks off another wraith and now there's really only two left. Oh yeah, but this is very good to up from, from Dandy. Yep. Uh, even though the dropships die, he's still denying mining, killing SCVs. He's got a siege tank and Goliath there in a pretty impervious position. So wow. Yeah, this is looking pretty good for Dandy. Hmm. Yeah, there's still plenty of units, but I really like Ultra Tank's position. It's like he's already thinking about splitting map in half, and these raids are constantly blocking, uh, are constantly blocking Danny from taking forward base. So he's very active with, with the with the raids. He added some factories, so we might have a little bit longer game over here. Don't jinx us, okay, Zero? <laughs> I, I didn't want to say that, <laughs> but yeah. that's the truth. We've got to get out of here, man. Like, We've got to save Brood War, but we also have to save the casters of Brood oh, War. Yeah. So, exactly. Here we go, Dandy. Dandy with <laughs> the final push of the game. Yeah, he's doing it for me. Oh, oh yeah. Mind, I'm not sure if that was the mind blowing it up or if it was everything else blowing it up. But they blew up anyway, and Dandy's making a very strong push. To control the high ground above the brand new third base. Yeah, and now the raids will try to save the day, but there are two Goliaths over here. Uh, hello? Oh, hello, hello. It's, okay, I think, fine. Good. Yeah, and Ultra is trying to hold on there, but there are more and more units coming in from Mr. Dandy. He's macroing like crazy. He's mining from three bases right now, and he's denying Ultra from mining from his own third base. And all the units are dying, and GG! So, Danny was listening to you, Mr. Rapid. <laughs> My hero. I'm gonna thank him for that uh, next time I see him. That's uh, definitely uh, A OK in my book. So, GG, congratulations to Dandy. He will be our third player to advance on to the round of 16 today. First player out of Group B. And that means that it is up to. Let's see who's left. It's Ultra, Bandy, and Hawk to battle amongst each other to figure out which player will advance out um, second. So I think now we will have Bandy versus Hawk. So, uh, right? Yes. So it will be ZDZ. Yes. Hmm. ZDZ. ZDZ. Oh yeah, you're right. Wow. ZDZ on on Clayfield. So it's always very interesting to see how. How good of a... Because i never seen Mr. Dandy playing ZVZ, so it's really interesting for 